Hi and welcome to my presentation. It's Living With and Stable. My name is Ashley Black and I would like to do some introductions just about myself. I am 38 years old. I am married to my husband Tommy and I live with my stepson Oliver and my lovely dog Penny who is a cockapoo. I love her so much. Um, I am a high school teacher. I love everything to do with sport. I played water polo for Scotland. I'm a very competitive person actually and I love everything kind of sport related and that sings in the subject that I used to teach. I used to be a PE teacher. I now work with children that have additional support needs and I love my job. I absolutely love it. One of my hobbies that I like to do is to play golf with my family and I just absolutely love spending time with my friends and family and take every opportunity to go out and about and make memories. So moving on, to give you a wee bit of background about myself, I was diagnosed with neuroendocrine cancer three weeks after my wedding day. Now, this took five years for me to get to this point. I was back and forth to my doctor with IBS related symptoms, bloated stomach, like I was in a lot of pain after I had eaten, I was back and forth to the toilet and things deteriorated over time and what I remember was going back and forth having lots of ultrasounds, lots of bloods taken and there was nothing, there was nothing shown in my bloods and to this day there is still nothing shown in my bloods at all. So what this has shown me is how sneaky this cancer is and how it will do everything it can to mask and hide from being detected. So after my journey had started, I was back and forth and I got to a point in 2018, it was the summer, where I had a breakdown in the doctors and I was adamant and very persistent to say, I can't go on and this can't happen anymore because I knew there was something wrong. As I said before, I'm a very active person. I love sport. And what was happening was, over a short period of time, I started to lose my energy and I started to lose one of the things that I love the most, which was exercising, and I couldn't do it. And this type of cancer was very sneaky because it took that away from me over a period of five years and I didn't realise till it got to a point where I couldn't do the things that I loved anymore. So that's when I went to the doctors and was very insistent on having further investigations to find out what was wrong. My doctor had sent me for a scope and I was, I was sent also as well for a CT scan which then had shown three tumours one of which was in my neck, one of which was in my chest and another which was on the outside of my stomach next to my kidney and my pancreas. Further investigations took place and I had a biopsy in January 2019 and it took a month for the results to come back and the consultant was very straightforward with me and said he didn't know what this was and I was then referred to the oncologist at the Beatson in Glasgow to when I was told in March that I had neuroendocrine cancer with an unknown primary. Now before then it was a long long journey to get there so it was a bit of relief to find out that I had a diagnosis but I didn't really know what this meant. To June of 2020, I had one of my tumours removed, the one that was on the outside of my stomach, which was next to my kidney and my pancreas. This took a full year for my consultant to decide, to decide that this was an appropriate method. Um, I spent the full, full year of 2019 with ongoing treatment, so I was back and forth every 28 days to the Beatson to get um, my ultratide treatment and every few months I had the CT scans to make sure everything was going the right direction. So what had happened was in one of my scans there had been an increase on the tumour that was next to my kidney and the decision was made 
before lockdown for me to have an operation to remove this tumour as it was growing. I travelled to Manchester to have the PET scan and to make sure that my surgeon had all the markers in place. So I was very fortunate to have my tumour removed in June of 2020. I am super relieved that I got this operation and it has been one of the best things that's ever happened to me. And I know that sounds very strange and probably you're thinking I'm crazy from this side, but what that operation has given me has been so much. I'm not in as much pain. I don't take pain relief anymore. I used to take Cocodemol on a daily basis. I don't touch the stuff anymore. I'm now not having surges of pain in my stomach and my back. I feel like I have a wee bit more energy. It's taken me about a full year to recover and to heal after having this operation. Now, when I went into the Glasgow Royal last year to have the operation, my surgeon was absolutely out of this world. It's Miss Quinn and uh, Mr Chong was assisting her just very straight down the line, very honest with me. And that's what I appreciated the most, was someone telling me the truth and giving me a bit of honesty about what I was facing. And they didn't beat about the bush. They told me that I was at risk of losing my kidney, part of my pancreas and my spleen, which I was fine with because I knew what I had to prepare for. So I was very thankful for their honesty in that. One of the things that they'd done for me, which I'm ever grateful for, was they promised that they would try and find the primary tumour for me and that just meant everything to me because this little tumour, wherever it is, cannot be found and after my operation, Miss Quinn came to speak to me and she said, we've looked everywhere and we just can't find it and I felt relief and I feel really glad because it's that small that it can't be found and I feel better about it now, as a result, I have a bigger scar for that because they wanted to get in and have a good look and I'm really glad they did. But the treatment and the care that I received during a really uncertain time was absolutely outstanding. I felt safe, I felt comforted and it was difficult because I spent um, six days in hospital, three of which were in high dependency, with no visitors and no contact from my family. And that was really difficult, but the staff in the hospital really made up for that and they made me feel at ease and gave me so much support. And I'm ever grateful for having that tumour removed. It's it's just been amazing. One of the things during this time and during my recovery that came up that I wasn't prepared for was the challenges of my own mental wellbeing. And I hadn't really considered the impact that that would have on me and what I then had to do to prepare myself and to look after myself during my recovery. So, as things have moved on, I'm in a different situation now and as I said, my mental health was a challenge and that's true when we're living with cancer and we talk about this is what we have to deal with. This is one of the biggest challenges that I've had is for me to accept this and to accept that I have cancer and I have this for the rest of my life. That's very hard to accept. It's very hard for me to, to process, especially when I've been so active. I feel as if cancer's taken a lot away from me. And it makes me angry and it makes me very upset. But what I've tried to do is really focus on the positives. And I've came a long way in the five years of struggle that I've had with this, this disease. And one of the things that I've learned is to be kind to myself and to accept that there is going to be good days. I'm going to have bad days too. And for me to accept if it's a bad day, it's okay. And for me to look after myself, because I'm really good at looking after everybody else, but, but not myself. So where I am just now is, obviously I have regular checkups, and recently I had a scan in August, and it was amazing news. Um, the two tumours that I have 
left um, have started to shrink and have really been receptive to the treatment that I'm getting. So it's just been the best news. It's been absolutely amazing. Obviously, I have my 20 day um, medication during lockdown and after my operation. I had a fabulous nurse which is, who has shown me how to administer my medication and I've changed from octreotide to landreotide and obviously that needle is absolutely horrendously huge and it's pretty scary looking at it actually from here but what that has given me is independence. I'm able to now self-administer my own medication, I'm able to look after myself and it's given me a lot of confidence because it separated me a wee bit from the hospital. And on a positive, that's that's been really good for me and my mental well-being because I know I can do this and I know I can look after myself. Sometimes I don't see myself sitting and fitting with the people that I see in the waiting room and the people that are really sick. I am sick, but I think it's it's me taking control and that's the biggest benefit to this. I've taken control of my life and I'm taking control of my medication and that's what works for me. And the independence it has created is it's making me accessible and more available to do my job, which I love. And I can obviously schedule my injections round about my work. I can do this whenever suits me within the 28 days, which is amazing. And a massive positive for me is obviously been able to be back full time and working. I absolutely love it. One of the side effects that this cancer has given me is B12. So I also administer my B12 as well every six weeks, which actually is sore than um, the landreotide. I don't know if people agree or disagree, but um, that's a stingy one. And recently, one of the side effects that I have had is um, it's to do with my blood sugar levels. So what we've noticed is when I've administered my medication, I have something called a hypo rebound, um, where my body thinks that I don't have enough insulin and will overproduce it and it makes me feel faint. So I've been monitoring my own blood sugar levels and actually over the past two months, there's not been any concerns, which has been great. So I'm feeling good and feeling really positive. So in terms of the things that have really, really helped me is obviously, like I've said before, I'm now stable and that's been the best news, the best Christmas, the best birthday present, the best news of my life and I've been stable for the past eight months and I don't like to take things for granted but what I want to do is live in the moment and I want to just live this up and love the fact that things are going well for me just now. Um, as I said, I found out recently that two of my tumours have shrunk. I still have an unknown primary and I'm glad that it wants to stay unknown. As long as it doesn't become known, I'm absolutely fine with that. Um, what I've realised, the things that really help me and the things that work for me going forward to help me be stable is meditating. And what I'd realised before was... As I said, I was very active, I'm very bouncy, I can't really sit still. And what I realised was I could not sit in a room for five minutes without moving or doing something. So I've really looked at how I can support my own mental wellbeing, how I can really live in the moment and just take time for myself. And meditating really helps that and relaxation, guided relaxation really helps. And obviously having scents and smells to support that has been absolutely amazing so I couldn't recommend that highly enough to try and to give it a go. Also being active I've looked at different sports so I mentioned that I've took up playing golf. I've also started looking at yoga um, which before I would have been like yoga's rubbish and why don't you just go and play a, a game of football or something. So I've really tried to rethink doing exercise, the things that work. Yoga's been a huge part of that and it's really hard. It's not easy. So being able to build up and focus my energy on doing something different, something else that's active. As I mentioned my dog before, Penny, 
Um, I love walking. I, I love being outside and again, I wouldn't have said walking would have been an exercise before, but I've really, I've really challenged myself and I now walk with my dog up to an hour every day and before my operation I was walking with her with 10 kilograms on my back. I like to push myself and I like to set goals and I'll continue to do that. I'm not at the point where I'm back at 10 kilograms, but I would like to work, work up to doing that and really pushing my body because I love exercise. I just need to find different ways of doing things and that's that's what my experience has shown that I can do things. I just need to think differently about how I do it. And being with my friends and family, really making time. Life passed me by before and I really took for granted my loved ones, my family and my friends and I would I would make excuses not to do things. Now I really push myself and I really push myself to obviously to make memories, to see people and to do the things I love. I've now started to really focus on my future. I've made made short term goals, places we want to go. Um, Oliver and Tommy and I have made a, a living list. We've put down a list of things that we want to do together. And that's just, that's been amazing to do that as a family. Real focuses of how we want to create our memories together. And I just love that. Um, and it's anything from going to Lapland, to going to Everyman Cinema, to um, try and paddle boarding. So there's lots of things on the list that we want to tick off together, which is just, it's amazing. And it's just, it's given me so much joy and so much focus to really think about my future. Having a good support system round about me, my family has been unbelievable and have just been an absolute rock throughout this. Being honest with them as well and telling people how I feel, I'm the very person that would say I'm fine and I'm not. So I'm trying to be better at being honest about how I feel and what I need. Really opening up and one of the things that's been amazing has been part of the Neuroendocrine Cancer UK Ambassadors Group. The people on the group that I've met are absolutely fantastic. They're so supportive and there's nothing that I can say that they wouldn't understand. I just think that the, the group of people that I can really relate to, they really understand me and the support network's just outstanding from Neuroendocrine Cancer UK. And just just having that support system there to talk to people that have something that's similar to me and understand is really important. It's really important to me. And me being able to talk about this and support other people is giving me absolute great joy. And I want to continue to do that and I want to make a difference and to help people. And I think going forward is just living in the moment. to end today's presentation with thanking you for taking the time to listen to my presentation, to listening to my journey and to listen to my thoughts and feelings. I hope if anything you take from today, the things that I've said is that there is hope, that there is hope that things will get better and there is always hope that we can change. And the biggest thing for me in terms of hope is educating is inspiring others, is making people aware of this cancer. We can do better and we can do more to spread that word. So I hope that this is a change that we can push together and we can make a difference. On that note, I would like to thank my friends and family for all the support they've given me and to Neuroendocrine Cancer UK. I know I'm in the position that I'm in from having a positive mindset, but also from the support from all the people around about me and giving me that encouragement and that hope that things will be better. So I would like to end on this poem that's called Hope. Hope. If you only carry one thing throughout your entire life, let it be hope. Let it be hope that better things are always ahead. Let it be hope that you can get through even the toughest of times. Let it be hope that you are stronger than any challenge that comes your way. Let it be hope that you're exactly where you're meant to be right now and that you're on the path to where you're meant to be. Because during these times, hope will be the very thing that carries you through. Thank you so much. <laughs>